future. And I thought I'd start here with a quote I found um, from Ray White Real Estate, which says, Majors Bay Road shopping strip has become the Champs Elysees of the inner west. The street is wide and tree lined and comes alive at night with strollers socialising and frequenting the many fine restaurants and cafes. If there is uh, one thing that never changes in the world, it is uh, uh, the uh, hyperbole from real estate agents. But Majors Bay Road is quite a uh, uh, quite a unique place, and maybe we'll get a bit of an insight into how it's uh, how it has actually come to be as it is now. Now I'm just going to see. All right, Seven Eleven. Okay. So we will start with the indigenous history of the area, uh, the Canada Canada Bay area, including Cabarita and Breakfast Point was part of the traditional lands of the Aboriginal people of the Wongal clan. Uh, the Wongal people gathered food from the harbour and its foreshores and are believed to have occupied the area uh, for over 20,000 years. Hen and Chicken Bay area was a major meeting place for Aboriginal people from Port Jackson and the wider Sydney area. And Captain John Hunter led an exploration of the Parramatta River on 5th February 1788. So there's literally only uh, a little over uh, a week after uh, the set uh, the, the settlers um, set foot uh, at Farm Cove. And he was met by members of the Wongal clan when he stopped for breakfast at the location now referred to as Breakfast Point. The Wongal people uh, called the area, and you'll have to excuse my pronunciation here, uh, Buridio El Ghul. The name Cabarita is an Aboriginal word which is thought to mean by the water. And the illustration that we've got here is quite an early one. Um, it's Port Jackson in New South Wales, South spelt S-U-O-T-H. <laughs> uh, and this is the um, this is good because it shows the way that Aboriginal people use the area. You notice the gentleman here with his spear, uh, fishing. For, I presume for fish. Uh, people in their in their canoes, which were known as nowies, and uh, quite a distinctive feature of Sydney life was the use of a. Uh, the use of a fire in the in the canoe, which enabled people to cook fish as soon as they caught them in the canoe, fish and uh, and shellfish. So next one, we will go to uh, is probably the best known of the Wongal people, and that's uh, Wallara Wari Benelong. He was a Wongal man who lived in this area, and he claimed Goat Island as his um, claimed Goat Island as as part of his land, la part of his land. So he was captured uh, on the orders of Governor Philip uh, in November 1789. He escaped in uh, May 1790 and was then seen at Manly in September 1790. Uh, when Governor F Philip was speared. It's thought possibly that uh, the reason that Governor Philip was speared at Manly uh, was in retaliation for his capture of Benelong. If the Aboriginal people of the time had wanted Philip dead, uh, he'd have had a spear right through the middle of him. He was speared through his shoulder and uh, he, uh, he survived, the, uh, survived this attack. And it's generally thought that um, as I said, if they had wanted him dead, he would have been dead. Uh, Benelong, uh, at the time of his capture in 1789, was estimated to be 25 years old. He was described as being of good stature, stoutly made, with a bold, intrepid countenance. Then Governor Philip made up, and in 1792, he accompanied Philip to England, uh, with another Wongal man uh, called Yemarawani. And I'll go on to my next slide here. Unfortunately, Yemarawani 
Yerimora Wanyi, uh, got sick when he was uh, in England and he actually died. And this is his headstone in a cemetery in uh, the United Kingdom in the, uh, as I said, buried uh, in 1794. So Yemura Wani died and was buried in England. Benelong returned to Sydney in 1795. And contemporary accounts reveal him to be courageous, intelligent, vain, quick-tempered, tender with children and something of a comedian. He died in 1811 and was buried at Kissing Point on the estate of James Squire, an ex-convict, uh, Australia's first brewer and a friend of Benelong. Uh, his grave has recently been rediscovered at 25 Watson Street, Putney, and I understand that there's going to be a, uh, a memorial to Bannalong built in, uh, at the site of his grave. So we'll move on to White Settlement and the parish of Concord. Uh, so Concord was one of the early land areas of the County of Cumberland and was probably named after the Battle of Concord, one of the first military engagements of the American Revolutionary War uh, in April 1775. So this is an early hand-drawn map. Uh, this area that we can see here is Concord. This one over here is Dremoyne. Running through the middle here is Parramatta Road and then uh, Burwood, uh, Burwood uh, and uh, Strathfield are here down to the uh, down to the down to the south of Parramatta Road. A little bit more detailed version of that same map, and you can see there uh, that you have a thing called Long Bottom. 936. So the 936 is 936 acres. And the Long Bottom Stockade was reputed to have been established by Governor Phillip uh, in 1792, almost exactly halfway between Sydney and Parramatta on the track that became Parramatta Road. So the stockade was first used uh, as a detention house for uh, iron gangs uh, on their way between Parramatta and Sydney. Uh, it was reserved for use as a government prison farm and the early, air, early years of the 19th century uh, convicts logged, made charcoal, shingles and sawn planks. By the mid 1820s, most of the timber had been cut and farming activity was confined mainly to kitchen gardening and the grazing of government cattle. And so by 1840, uh, it was used to house iron, uh, uh, used to house road gangs and smaller detachments of mounted, mounted police. So we'll go. And so this is Parramatta Road here. The road that we can see running up this way is Concord Road. And I will get people to note the line here. Uh, that's quite important for our later story of uh, Majors Bay Road. We have the land owned by the Nichols family here, 50 acres granted to Isaac Nichols uh, in 1794, and then a later land grant here, uh, which is now Urala. So you see there that there's a house, Mark Nichols. So we'll go along to our next one. where we can actually see uh, the layout of the Long Bottom Stockade. So you can see Long Bottom Stockade here. Uh, you have Parramatta Road here and Stockade Street here, which is now Loftus Street. Burton Street runs pretty much where it does now. Uh, and what was known then as Wharf Street uh, is now the portion of Burwood Road, north of Parramatta Road. And there's a little bit more detail of that same thing. So Burton Street, Stockade Street, uh, now Loftus Street. You have Gipps Street running here, and Gipps Street extends now, comes around this way, and then meets up with, uh, meets up with Queens, uh, Queens Road around about here.
so between 1840 and 1842, uh, 58 French Canadians were exiled uh, to the Longbottom Stockade. They had taken part in an uprising in Lower Canada, which is now a portion of Quebec. Uh, and two uh, two groups of, uh, of French, uh, two groups of French and English-speaking uh, Canadian rebels uh, came out to uh, came out to Australia. In and we'll go forward a ship called HMS Buffalo. HMS Buffalo uh, dropped the English speaking prisoners uh, at, in, in Tasmania. They were going to Port Arthur. The French speaking uh, Canadian exiles uh, were going to be sent, uh, originally the thought was to send them to Norfolk Island. Uh, Archbishop, uh, uh, Archbishop Polding uh, interceded on their behalf and uh, instead of going to Norfolk Island, which was a, a place of uh, quite, quite extreme punishment, uh, they were instead allowed to stay here in Sydney. And deciding where to put them, the, uh, the governor allowed them to go to the, uh, to the Longbottom Stockade. And one of them, uh, um, Francois Xavier Prieur, uh, described the buildings as, uh, at the Longbottom Stockade as consisting of four shelter sheds or huts, to which were added a little storeroom, a kitchen, and some other little buildings, and a barracks at this time occupied by a squad of soldiers and some policemen. All of these buildings were arranged in a square, the centre of which formed a courtyard, which we were not, uh, which we were ordered not to cross uh, without permission under the penalty of fifteen, uh, under the penalty of fifty lashes. Uh, after the departure of the Canadians, the Longbottom Stockade fell into disrepair and was mainly used as a lockup. And in 1886, uh, the land around the stockade was uh, dedicated to St. Luke's Park. So we'll go forward. A portion of the land was actually used as a, uh, a portion of the land was actually used uh, as, uh, a, a, as grazing land for uh, police horses. This is thought to be a photograph of police horses on a portion of the stockade land around the turn of the century. I'm not certain on this. It may be, uh, but there's another piece of land uh, that's also known as the police paddocks. So it's possible this one is taken, not there, but somewhere nearby, but we're really not sure. Okay. Now, I talked a little earlier about Isaac Nichols, uh, who was a former convict who was granted 50 acres, uh, now 20 hectares or thereabouts, uh, that's now Urala. Uh, the bay to the north of Nichols Grant was called uh, imaginatively, imaginatively enough Nichols Bay. Uh, it's now known as Urala Bay. The area uh, south of Nichols uh, Holding uh, was called Majors Bay. There's some doubt, but we believe it's possibly named after Major George Johnston, who was the stepfather of um, Isaac Nichols' second wife, Rosanna Abrams. So we have uh, so we have, we believe that uh, Majors Bay is probably named after Major George Johnston, but it's not, it's not certain. The earliest uh, reference that I can find to it um, refers to it as Sergeant Majors Bay. So um, it's a bit of a puzzle. We may or may not get to the bottom of that one day. So we had the, as I said, we had 936 acres uh, that were 
the site of the uh, long bottom stockade and the land belonging the, to the stockade. In, I believe it's, it, it's a little hard to tell, but I think it's in the 1830s, a large portion of the former stockade was subdivided and was sold in lots of five and 10 acres. Now, I will go and we, I got a more, this map is dated 1858, but I believe that the, uh, I believe that it's, uh, reflecting a subdivision which happened earlier than that. So this one, I will then go and show a more detailed version of this one. Now, up the top here, we have got uh, land belonging to Thomas Walker, um, land here belonging to Henry Brewer, this street here, which is unnamed at the time, is now Brewer Street, um, named after, obviously named after Henry Brewer. This road that we see running down here uh, is actually Majors Bay Road. So we got Crane Street here, this area here, which says temporary reserve for water supply um, is now, uh, Oh, which park is it? That's uh, one of the parks. I'll get. I'll get to that one. Um, is it Rothwell? I, th I think that might be Rothwell Park there. Uh, this one down here, which is another another reserve, uh, is now uh, is now now Queen Elizabeth Park, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. The street that you see running through here is Wellbank Street. Uh, and obviously you've got Crane Street. Oh, I'll go back. We've got Crane Street uh, running here. And this is the layout of the streets as they are now, pretty much. A few more streets have been subdivided and put in there, but uh, all of these, uh, basically this reflects the current, uh, current street layout. There's no name for the street there. Um, but the street, this particular street led all the way up to uh, Majors Bay. And I guess for fairly obvious reasons, they then named it uh, Majors Bay Road. So we'll go to our, we'll go to our next photograph. Now this one is um, Jocelyn's Paddock. And this is a subdivision, actually, if we go back, uh, you can see here, we've got Wellbank Street, Brewer Street, Majors Bay Road here. And if you have a look, you've got Wellbank Street, Brewer Street, Majors Bay Road. So Jocelyn's Paddock is this one here, which is uh, portion 79 of six acres, uh, six acres, three roods, 34 perches. And you can see here, we've got, um, you can see here, then we've got an early subdivision. This is probably the earliest uh, uh, suburban subdivision in the Majors Bay Road area. And it dates, uh, as you can see there, from September 1886. Uh, so Wellbank, uh, Wellbank, Spring Street, Bent Street. Uh, and we'll see, have a look then at this one, which is a pair of terraces. Um, these two stone, stone terraces stood at 105 and 107 Majors Bay Road. They were among the earliest buildings in Majors Bay Road. Um, in Sands Directory, uh, nothing shows up for Majors Bay Road in 1887 and in 1888 this and about five other houses show up in Majors Bay Road. So these were probably some of the earliest houses built in Majors Bay Road. They were built uh, 1887 by a builder called William Bowler of Mortlake and Bowler sold the newly completed terraces to a man called Henry Crosley uh, shortly thereafter. They survived in that spot until uh, 1981. So if we have a look 
They were built on lot 11, so they were built just there. Now, if we go back to our map, you will see here, we've got Brewer Street that says two Corries, and then it says Majors Bay Road, uh, two Mortlake Gas Works up here. So the Mortlake Gas Works, and we'll go ahead. Mortlake Gas Works were built at, uh, on Mortlake Point and We'll talk a little bit more about them, but um, obviously uh, with this subdivision in 1886, the fact that these um, these things were at the end of the roads uh, made Majors Bay Road uh, a bit of an artery. This one's Corrie's Garden. And so we saw uh, Brewer Street pointing off towards Corrie's Garden. Uh, Corrie's Garden was built uh, built about 1885, uh, had a large dance hall and picnic grounds. And Corrie's, uh, Corrie's house, the two-storey one that we can see over here on the right-hand side, uh, Corrie's house is still extant uh, down towards the end of uh, Cabarita Point. Now, I thought at this point we could discuss the tramway. I'll do that and then I think uh, I'll take a little bit of a break then. I'll take some questions and uh, take some questions uh, and, uh, and then we'll get stuck into the second half. So the Majors Bay, uh, Bay Road tramway uh, started originally as a steam tramway in 1891 and it uh, operated between Ashfield and Enfield. Uh, in 1901, this line was extended north to Mortlake, and in 1909, a branch uh, to Cabarita Park and Corrie's Gardens was opened. The system was electrified in 1912, and so the route ran north along Burwood Road, uh, through Burwood, then turned into Crane Street, Majors Bay Road, Brewer Street to Cabarita Junction. The tram that you can see there uh, is a, a type O class. The, they were known um, they were known by the Sydney public at the time as uh, a toast rack tram. They have they don't have a centre corridor. They have seats that run all the way through, and uh, because of their slight uh, resemblance to a toast rack. They were known as toast rack trams. The reason they were used on the line apparently is because of the hills that um, that the trams encountered in the area. Uh, they were the most powerful trams on the Sydney system and they were the only ones apparently that could um, that could handle the uh, handle that uh, 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 handle the, uh, the 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 steepness of the grades. So when we come back, uh, I'm going to start talking about some of the shops that we can see on here and, uh, and other things in the area. So I am now going to pause and maybe see if we've got, to, see if we've got any questions. So everyone, I've uh, allowed people to unmute themselves. If you have any questions, please uh, uh, go ahead. You can either go through the chat or else uh, unmute yourself and um, ask away. Thanks. John, how, how long of a break will you will you be having? You well, think? just look, if we don't get if we don't get a huge amount of questions, I'll just spend a couple of minutes and um, uh, and then we'll we'll get back into it. Um, but I just thought it might be nice to uh, leave leave a bit of uh, leave a bit of space. Can mm -hmm. are people able? I'm looking here and I'm just wondering. So I've I've got a. Uh, a, f a question from Nicola okay. uh, about the photo. 
is it is this photo uh, Magia's? It's in the uh, uh, the chat section. Is this photograph? Is this photo um, Magia's? M A J I R S, or maybe it's Majors. Oh, Majors Bay Road. Bay Road. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to if we have a look here you will see this is actually majors bay road running along here uh this road here uh i'm trying to remember i can't actually remember the name of that one but it actually that up there is wellbank street there so it's wellbank street along there majors bay road running up this way we've got the uh uh, yeah, so we've got the the Ritz, which we'll be talking about there. So we're we're looking from the north, looking south along Majors Bay Road, and as I said, that is Wellbank Street there. Okay, um, okay. From Emily, we want to know what year. Uh, I have dated this to somewhere between about 1930 and 1934. Uh, and I'll get to the reason why I've dated it to that date uh, when we go, uh, when we get uh, a little bit further down the track. Um, There's a question also from Stefan yep. as to where, where did the name Concord come from? Okay, so the name Concord comes from the, um, the parish, which, is, uh, which was Concord, Concord Parish. I believe it's named after the Battle of Concord, uh, which was the first battle of the American Revolutionary War of the oh, 17, uh, hang on, I'll go back. It's in my notes here, just bear with me. Um, yeah, so it was named after the Battle of Concord, which was the first military engagement of the American Revolutionary War in 1775. Back a little, and I will go back and I didn't point this out, but if we have a look here, you will see that we have the long bottom stockade here and we have the village of Concord in this area here which is basically um, west of uh, west of Broughton Street uh, heading towards heading towards Concord Road. Concord Road is just a little bit further west than the end of this uh, than the end of this map. Uh, so the name derives I believe um, the name I believe derives from uh, the the name of the of the uh, municipality of Concord, uh, I think, derives from the village of Concord, which derives from the parish of Concord. Well, that's that's my best guess. Okay. Are you up for another question, John? Or I um, am. Yep. Uh, there is someone who's asked uh, if any of the shop facades are they are there any that are still the same today? Yes, and actually, I. I did say that I would tell you how I dated this, um, how I dated this, um, uh, th this photograph. Uh, and if you have a look here, can you read there that it says CA West? Can you read that, Dennis? Oh. Where I'm putting. I, I have old eyes, John. You'll have to ask someone younger. <laughs> Okay, yes. this shop here says CA West, and it's very hard to see, but in the window of the shop, it says Butchers. So that is CA West's Butchers shop. CA West uh, was in that butcher shop till about 1933. In 1934, that butcher shop uh, was occupied by a butcher called Chilcot. And uh, Chilcot's Butchery is still there in that sh same shop today. So 
And that, as far as I can work out, is probably the only business in the Majors Bay uh, shopping centre that actually um, that that actually dates back to the 1930s. So that's a family family business, uh, and a lot of the facades that you can see here are basically still there. And we'll see a little bit more of that. Uh, uh, we'll see a little bit more of that as we go a bit further along. Um, but yeah, so that building there, CA West Butcher Shop, is still a butcher shop today. But the uh, uh, the Wellbank service station that you can see there, that single story facade there, for example, has been replaced with a double story facade. But a lot of these, a lot of the facades here uh, are actually still uh, still visible in Majors Bay Road. Any other questions? Uh, I think uh, we've got Majors Bay Road. Yep, yep. Okay. I think I've answered everybody everybody's questions. So if that's the if that's the case, we will keep on going. Okay. So we have, uh, as I said, uh, we've got this photograph here, which dates, as I said, I believe between 1930-1934, with the trams. We got the cars. Um, it's a fantastic period shot. Uh, shot. Um, this one is taken from almost the same spot. Uh, and if you have a look, you will see there's, if I, there's a couple of single story shops, which I think are here. And then basically this group of shops here right on the corner has been, uh, group of shops here has been demolished and replaced with a beautiful BP service station. Um, does anybody here remember the BP service station in Majors Bay Road? Yes, I do. You do? <laughs> Excellent. I knew I somebody. Lived, I have lived in Concord nearly all my life. So um, I remember a lot of, I remember the old building you showed us early, the one that was demolished in 1981. Yeah. Actually, I remember walking past that building many times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looked very familiar when I saw it. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's right. There was a building there. Yeah. <laughs> it's been replaced. Yeah. Yep. Um, now I've got a, uh, I've got a question of what year is this taken? Um, this is uh, this is out of our collection. It was tentatively dated at 19, uh, 1970. Uh, I was discussing this with Dennis a little bit earlier. I believe that 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 looks suspiciously like a uh, um, looks suspiciously like um, a Holden. Oh, I'm trying to remember what it is. It's a little Holden, dating. I think that car dates from about 1975. The Honda Civic from probably 1973 onwards. So I would date this probably at more like 1975 than 1970. Uh, but this is nice because it kind of gives us a sense of what uh, Majors Bay Road looked like at that period. And then we'll try this now. Cross our fingers and we'll see whether this works. Okay. So now that's that same corner that we were looking at um, from virtually the same point. Uh, and this multi-story building here on the right has replaced the, um, the multi-story building here on the right has replaced the service station. The shop fronts that we can see over here on the left-hand side are actually ones that we have definitely, we've seen those in photographs. Chilcot's Butchery, I think, is that one. And we can probably go up the street a bit. There we go. Oh, look at that. Chilcot's Butchery. Uh, and then the two-story building here that, that we see here is actually a replacement of the uh, two-story building that we can see here is a replacement of the single-story well bank service station but all these other facades are basically the same as the ones that we saw in that photograph so if i go so basically 
that's been replaced, but these are still there. And sorry, I'll go back there. And these ones are still there as well. Okay. Um, now I'll just scroll through my notes. So we'll go forward to that. We've seen the street view. Okay. We'll then go to the Terrabona estate. Uh, this is from 1915. And if you have a look here, you will see you've got Wellbank Street here. So this is the east side of Wellbank Street, from uh, the east side of Majors Bay Road, from Wellbank Street down to Rothwell Park, Jones Street. Um, we can tell it's 1915 because we've got a Gallipoli Street. Uh, we've also got Jellico Street. I thought Jellico might have been named in honour of um, Jellico because of the um, oh, the famous naval battle of 1916, whose name will come to me in a minute. Um, actually, yeah, so it's Admiral Jellico, uh, who apparently managed the uh, managed the British fleet in the uh, uh, in the uh, invasion of Gallipoli. So we got Gallipoli. Warbrick, Warbrick Street, if you don't know what a street is named after, generally it's named after a councillor. And in this case, yes, uh, Alderman Warbrick of, uh, of Concord Council. See the tramway running through here. And we'll go on to a building that uh, was actually built on, no, Hang on, which one are we going to go to? Yes, we will. We'll go to a building uh, that was actually built uh, on this estate. And I think that's it, corner of, yeah, corner of Gallipoli Street. So I think it's there. And that one is, and we go to our next one. All right, the Central Concord Theatre. This, um, this dates, uh, this dates, I think from, I think I've got a date on this of about 1924 from memory. Uh, so the original theatre at Concord uh, and my notes say Majors Bay Road and Jellicoe Street. Um, so it must be Jellicoe Street, I guess. Uh, was known as the Central Picture Palace. And opened in 1921. Uh, it was a single story galvanized iron building and seated 1100. It was then rebuilt uh, as an 1150 seat two, store, two level building and renamed the Ritz in the late 1920s. And this is a photograph of the Ritz. Uh, the photograph dates I think from uh, about 1934 or 1935. Um, so it uh, closed for a few days for the installation of a sound system and reopened uh, as a talking picture theatre uh, in 1930 with a film called The Desert Song. Apparently it was equipped with a Christie organ in 1931. And I've got a nice little quote here from Shirley Alford. Uh, every Saturday afternoon, we walked to the movies at the Ritz Theatre on Majors Bay Road, Concord, where a man played the organ on stage before the movie started. I was given sixpence for my fare in and one penny to spend, which I paid for an ice cream, which paid for an ice cream. Uh, the Ritz uh, was a casualty of the coming of television in 1976. So it operated on a uh, restricted screening policy for a short time prior to closure in 1960. So it was used as a storehouse after closure and it was sold in 77 and converted into a, into a supermarket. Now, we will have a little look. Okay. And so we've, this is what it looks like now. It's now, well, it doesn't look like this now because there was a fire, but anyway. Uh, so it's been the Espresso Organica for a number of years. Uh, but as I said, it looks quite different. 
and I suspect it's had uh, I suspect it's had another story added, but locals might be able to um, to fill us in on that. Um, and we'll go to our next one here. Okay, and again, oh yeah. This one is rather nice. So this is the um, this is the theatre um, being used as uh, as a um, a venue for uh, an electricity um, um, and a, 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 a cooking demonstration um, showing the benefits of electricity. So you save time and money when you cook by electricity. Kofa was obviously the big thing, at the big new thing at that time. Plenty of stuff about Kofa here. We've got the uh, stove on the stage. We have a, 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 we have a, a band. We've got another stove on this side. It's quite astonishing to uh, it's quite aston astonishing to see the um, the sheer um, you know the, the 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 amount of effort that's been put into this presentation. This is rather nice because uh, it's the only photograph I've seen showing the interior of the uh, showing the interior of the theatre. And quite a quite a lovely uh, quite a lovely interior. I don't think any of which survives now. Now, this one is literally just across the road from the uh, from the cinema, and this is Concord Post Office. Uh, there have been a number of post offices in Concord's history. Uh, up until 1930, uh, the post office was in Wharf Road, now Burton, uh, now Burwood Road near Burton Street. Uh, and in November 1929, um, the mayor, Alderman Rothwell, uh, pleaded for a new post office for Concord. Uh, he had a meeting with uh, with representatives from the uh, from the post office. And he stated that the population of the district was increasing at uh, the rate of seven people a day. The combined eloquence of the Alderman of Concord and Mr. C. K. Langmuir, however, failed to convince Mr. Kitto of the uh, post office of the urgency of the request when compared with other similar demands. So the deputation now intends interviewing the minister. The minister obviously came to the party uh, because about three months later, tenders were called to the opening of the post office. So we will have a little look at the, and so this is Concord Post Office as it is now. Uh, and as I said, literally just across the road, uh, from the uh, from the cinema over this side. So this is the real in uh, in 1930. I, I guess this is the real kind of kind of heart of uh, heart of Concord. And I found a nice little article uh, from 1946 uh, from the Sun where thieves blast open post office strong room. Blasting open the 300 weight door of Concord Post Office strong room early today, Cracksman got away with about 50 pounds in cash, 120 pounds in undated postal notes and a loaded revolver. Two safes containing about 45 pounds were not touched. So much gelignite was used by the safe blowers that the residents nearby were awakened by the explosion. Apparently it was about half past two in the morning, probably as best I can work out, it's probably the most exciting thing that's ever happened in central Concord. Uh, I don't know whether they ever caught the thieves, but uh, apparently it seemed to have been quite a, quite a big thing at the time. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Concord Golf Club. So we've gone from the middle of Concord um, well towards the northern end of, uh, of Majors Bay Road. So local uh, uh, local people formed Concord Golf Club uh, in uh, sometime between July and September 1898. 
first match was played on 29th of July, 1899 against the former Strathfield Golf Club. In 1901, the course was extended to 18 holes and extending towards Homebush Bay in 1902. This uh, wasn't on the current site. Um, the current site was purchased by an organisation called Concord Golf Limit, Li Golf Concord Golf Links Limited. They purchased 114 acres at 50 pounds per acre from the estate of the late Thomas Walker, and combined with 30 acres leased from uh, Edith Walker. Uh, the 145 acres or thereabouts form the nucleus of the present course. So in 1907, uh, the current, the course was open on the current site. And I love this photograph. I love the gentlemen here in their plus fours. Um, golf was obviously a very, uh, obviously you were, had to wear the appropriate clothing. Uh, in the 1930s to play golf. So the clubhouse uh, with the dining room, golf links and, uh, sorry, looking across the, uh, looking across the, the, the links there. So this one actually shows the, um, this one shows the, the, the full layout of the course. We go not quite, we, just a little bit off the edge of this photograph, we have uh, Concord Road. And then down this end here, I rather like this photograph because it shows the whole of Majors Bay Road all the way down and it goes all the way to Majors Bay. So we can see Majors Bay here, we got Majors Bay Road. So we can see that essentially the golf course takes up the whole of that portion to the west of Majors Bay Road, uh, all the way uh, from the top, all the way from here at the top end of the of the shopping centre, all the way to uh, to Majors Bay, and it was a rather elaborate entrance built for the golf club. I think in about I think this dates to about 1939, and. We'll have a look, okay. And that's the, that's the archway now. But I actually think this one's been moved. I think that the archway originally stood over here and has actually been moved through 90 degrees here. So this is at the, uh, this is at the sort of, far at the northern end of Majors Bay Road. Uh, and essentially from here, it's, uh, as I said, we've got the, the golf course on the, uh, on the, got the golf course on the, on the western side there. So we'll go along to our next one. Now, the Central Concord Ex Servicemen's Memorial Club was formed in 1927 and they raised funds. Uh, they secured uh, a block of land for 600 pounds and the deposit of 60 pounds was raised by a benefit night at the Ritz Theatre. The building was designed by architect Clement Glancy. Work began in 1930 uh, and it was built entirely by local men with preference given to the unemployed. The women's auxiliary provided a tent from which the workers were served food and drinks and all the funding was raised locally. And further fundraising permitted the completion of the planned two-storey front portion. So as originally completed, it looked like this, single storey and then a small entrance portico. And then when it was finally completed, you see that's the single story portion and then the two story uh, portion erected in front. Due to declining membership of the club after World War II, the hall was vested in Concord Municipal Council in 63. 
and it's been used since as a community hall and also as a function center. If we have a look here. So this is uh, as Concord Memorial Hall now stands. And if we have a little look up here, we can see in the middle of the road, we have got, uh, got uh, a, uh, uh, a rather large uh, strip in the middle that's now planted with trees. And if we go back to our, okay. And this is looking from that, from that portion, looking uh, south along Majors Bay Road, BP service station over here, the terrace of houses over here. And the portion in the middle is named Prince Henry Place and it was named in honour of Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester. And uh, there was a tree planting uh, held on Empire Day in 1935. And 18 trees were planted by prominent citizens. And later the same day, uh, Later the same day, the Memorial Hall was opened by Colonel Murphy. So we're nearly at an end. There's just a couple more items to go. And we've already seen Prince Henry Place. So this one was the, uh, uh, this one was the, uh, was the, uh, the building of uh, Henry, of Henry Summers. It's a manufacturer uh, of steel awnings, among other things. And later on, uh, it then became what I believe is um, Concord Metal Industries. And if you have a look here, you'll see there's a pile of safes marked as CMI, which I believe stands for Concord Metal Industries. And CMI still produce um, still produce safes today. So we'll just go, we're just nearly at the end here. So we've got the Concord Quarry. And the Concord Quarry was established about 1906. And uh, by a gentleman by the name of John Foran. It passed to uh, Arthur Foxcroft and uh, was sold then to Concord Council in 1930. And we will see how this, uh, yep, this is going to. Uh, uh, Sorry, I don't think I'm going to be able to find that. I'm going to have to go back. Was filled with garbage and then became uh, what is now known as Massey Park Golf Club, which opened in 1957. Just a little bit more. So the uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, came to Concord in 1954, drove by the Broadway, Broughton Street to Concord Park. Concord Park is now known as Queen Elizabeth uh, Park in honour of the visit. And after reviewing massed ranks of children from over 100 schools, the royal couple proceeded down Concord Road to Concord Repat Hospital. Apparently more than 500 fainted while waiting for the Queen to visit. Uh, this one is a nice one. This is from 1970, uh, showing a parade. Uh, this is actually the Captain Cook centenary in 1970, and a parade heading down, uh, heading down Majors Bay Road, and we're right here at the corner of, uh, right here at the corner of Wellbank Street. Current street view for that one. So that's as that corner looks now. So we've taken our walk down Majors Bay Road uh, and this is Majors Bay Road here, literally as it um, is just about to hit 
and Majors Bay, which is the bay that we see here. We have uh, an oval here and then council uh, have recently done some, uh, have uh, done an artificial uh, turf on this one here. I just like this because I thought we would finish off with Majors Bay Road at Majors Bay. So that's the end of my presentation, our walk down Majors Bay Road. Have we got any questions? How are we going there? I have one. You do, Dennis? Yes, am, am, am I allowed to have to ask a question? Yeah, you can ask a question, yes. This is, um, uh, I really like that um, the pamphlet from uh, uh, the, par the paraphernalia from the Ritz Cinema. Uh, I just wanted to get a sense of scale. Is that a poster? Is it a flyer? Uh, could... Oh, you mean the... Uh... Um, that was uh, that was a uh, that was actually a news cutting. I a think news that, cutting, so that it was, was in newspaper. So it was a, a it was a little little news cuttings. Yes. Okay. And 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 one one more thing than when you showed the interior shot of of the uh, theatre. Yes. Um, was that uh, was that normal for for the theatre to to host events? Uh, other than uh, showing uh, si uh, pictures uh, or cinema, or was that a result of uh, the uh, the uh, coming of television, where the, where they had to diversify and op open no, themselves up to trade shows? No, I think that's I think that's much earlier. Uh, I don't believe that. Um, I don't believe that that. Uh, actually dates from from the 1960s that to me looks more like mid 1930s okay um, yeah. I'm not quite sure when Kofa became a when Kofa <laughs> became a, a big thing somebody asked me when I did a run through somebody asked me what Kofa was and uh, and I said well yes it's it's basically it's um, it's coconut lard essentially yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got a few thank yous here from um, I've got a few thank yous here from uh, from people. Actually, uh, I forgot uh, my that wasn't my last slide. My last slide uh, is uh, are my sources here. Uh, so most of those images you will be able to find on the uh, City of Canada Bay Library catalogue, uh, and so I've got the uh, the address there. Uh, we also got some stuff from Canada, City of Canada Bay Heritage Society. Trove, if anybody hasn't used it, please uh, please have a bit of a look at that, plus some, some other bits and pieces as well. Um, and, okay, um, just, yeah. Um, now we're going to, we're going to be sending, um, sending out a survey or something after this, Dennis? Yes, we uh, we should have your details through um, uh, Eventbrite. So if you could please bear bear with us, because we love statistics and feedback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'd we'd love to send you a, a short uh, survey, monkey survey, to um, just get a little bit of feedback on on the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, and, and I'd like to thank everybody who participated in this. It's we we kind of did a, you know, it was a bit of an experiment on our part to try and see whether we could deliver something like this, whether people would find it interesting. And uh, yeah, so I'd like to I'd like to thank everybody for persevering. I'm sorry, I think I, yeah. I didn't actually go too long over time, did I, Dennis? I no, no, was... no, you didn't. Your your sixth sense was uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So yeah. So I'm yeah. So I'm sorry. I I I did plan to leave a little bit more time at the end for questions. So anybody getting got any other questions? There's um, a, there's one from Emily. Um, yes. Saying, is there a recording available? I I am recording this, but but uh, I um. Rest assured, the top bar where uh, all your names and uh, uh, all your, well, those who have your cameras on, uh, 
that will be blacked out. So, so you won't be, uh, um, yes. So um, there, there will be a, a recording. I, unfortunately, John, in my excitement, I think I missed out on the third, first 30 seconds. So maybe I'll, I'll ask you to splice on uh, an additional and I'll put it together in post. And then uh, I, yeah, then uh, I presume we'll, we'll see if we can make it available somehow because yeah. you're you you do these non-virtually or physically as well so and you're you're looking at building up an archive of some sort is that right yeah that's that's correct so um and so we, the thing to me is that uh, we just we just thought we'd have a go at this um it's a you know there wasn't really any way that we could run a walking tour and we thought yeah well we'll give it a try and uh, so certainly we'd welcome we welcome feedback uh, about it. And uh, here we go. Can you do hen and chicken bay, which is, can, okay. I actually, I have a theory about, um, I have a theory about, uh, about this. Um, off the end of Cabarita Point uh, is uh, a little rock shoal which apparently originally had a large rock and then some smaller rocks. And very early on, probably in the 1790s, that was named Hen and Chicken Rocks. And what then happened was that uh, I believe then that the bay uh, was named Hen and Chicken Bay after Hen and Chicken Rocks. Canada Bay, the suburb, uh, is named after a little bay at the uh, southern end of, uh, of, of Hen and Chicken Bay called Canada Bay after the Canadian exiles. The reason for calling it the city of Canada Bay is that somebody said, well, it's the bay that's between uh, Concord and Dremoyne. And so therefore it uh, represents that. My view is that the bay between Concord and Tremoyne is Hen and Chicken Bay. So I thought that there really should have been not so much the city of Canada, more, more the city of Hen and Chicken Bay, but no, nobody, nobody thought that was a good idea apparently at the time. Um, so yeah, uh, so we'll have a look and see whether we can present on some other things. And as I said, if people give us some feedback to let us know how we went and uh, and maybe to let us know what other subjects they'd like covered. We there's can also, look at, hmm? Sorry, there's also a request from Nicola uh, yeah. on other subjects that maybe the next one could be about Urala. Oh, okay, yes. Um, okay, I can certainly, yep, I can certainly have a look at that and have a think about it. We've certainly got plenty of material on Urala. Uh, I must admit, I haven't led a walking tour at Urala. That's um, one of the things that was on my list to do, but we haven't quite got there yet. But anyway, all right, any other questions? No, anybody? Um, all right, well, thank you all for your patience. <laughs> I hope that was okay, and um, I'll look forward to um, I'll look forward to meeting you all at uh, meet, meeting you all possibly in real life. Seeing as uh, um, we have a we we've had the news now that uh, Five Dock Library and the Learning Space will be uh, will be opening from Monday onwards. So if you come into Five Dock Library from Monday onwards, you can come and say hello. Come and say hello to, to me personally. <laughs> all right, thank you all, and uh, I think that um, I think that's going to be it. And Dennis, if you want, wouldn't stick, wouldn't mind sticking around for a minute or two, and then we'll uh, we'll just debrief. have a bit of a debrief. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Yep. Good night. All right.